Hi guys, welcome to Skied Meditation Music. This video is on how I learned to astral project in one day. Yes, I've finally done it. I've finally got the formula and I'm gonna share it with you guys today. So if you are interested in learning how to astral project in one day with an at least 80% efficiency, or that's what I'm getting, then keep watching this video. Before I go into the exact formula, I just need to state something. Because unfortunately, there are many videos out there that make these claims and dumb down what astral projection is to something that it's not. Now, there are people out there that make claims, for example, astral projection is what we do every night when we go to sleep. No, that's called dreaming. And if we learn to control our dreams consciously, a little bit like daydreaming, but in a much deep, deeper state, then we can lucid dream. Now, lucid dream is wonderful. It's very powerful. It has some very highly advanced techniques. Some militaries of different countries have used it. It's been proven. It's been published. We all know it's out there. It's very, very powerful stuff and very, very effective stuff. But that is not astral projection. And anyone telling you that that is astral projection, basically, they haven't astral projected. They may have lucid dreamed and they may have had very powerful lucid dreams and they may be able to lucid dream whenever they want, but it is only lucid dreaming. And the people that say this are actually saying that any shamanic journey of shamans that study their whole lives to go on these shamanic journeys, these astral projections, aren't actually really doing anything. They're just controlling their dreams. Now, I don't know about you, but sorry, I, I don't think people should be dumbing down this stuff. It's just not right. Okay, we all learn, we all go on journeys, we think we get to stages, and then we think, oh, we've got it, and we haven't. And this happens, and everyone has a learning process. So it's understandable that people have these misconceptions. And that's okay, we all learn. Astral projection is not lucid dreaming, and it's nothing like the dreaming we do at night. And once you have astral projected, you are going to know the difference. Okay, so let's get stuck in to astral projection. How do I know that I am astral projecting now? The formula I'm going to give you. Is it the first time I've ever astral projected? No, it's not. If you go back on my channel, which I have over 600 videos on now, you will actually see I did a vlog on using different systems of astral projection and trying to get there. I explained that I have managed to astral project using binaural beats with a low, very, very low efficiency rate, maybe 20, 30% of the time I tried to do it, I actually managed to do it. So I've done this stuff, I know what it is. So when I got there doing this, I knew that I'd reached it. Now is the formula I'm gonna give you, the bog standard rehashed formula so many people put out on social media. No, it's not. It's actually a very different formula. I'm gonna say right now, it's so different that the regular people say that you have to lie very, very still and you have to control your body and coat absolutely, totally, completely relaxed, etc., etc. You don't, not this way. You don't have to do that. And for me, when I found this formula and started using, I had to tinker with it because it still didn't work for me. That was just such a relief because I would lie down and I'd be there and my body would start twitching involuntarily. So how am I supposed to lie perfectly still if my body has these involuntary twitches? Well, you just have to stay there. That's what they say. Yeah, nah, sorry. It, it just didn't work for me. And that's why I couldn't do it without the binaural beats and waking up at certain times of day and now, you don't need any of that. It, 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 you, you just don't. 
you're going to see how to do it. You're going to be able to, if you know how to do all the processes in the formula I give you, you're going to be able to do it today. If you don't know how to do all the steps, it might take you a bit longer as you practice the steps going through. That's fine, but you will get there very, very quickly. Okay, so let's get stuck in to this formula. How do we go about it? Okay, step one. And this is a very, very important step. Astral projection has a lot of stigma. There's a lot of fear about astral projection, about negative entities attacking you, blah, 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 blah. And if you manage to astral project with those fears, guess what's going to happen to you? So you don't even want to try whilst you have this. For most people, these fears will actually stop them. Their subconscious will stop them from astral projection due to fear. So obviously, the first step is we have to let go of all the stigma, the negative stigma around all your fears, your negative beliefs, because they're just not real before you start even to astral project. How do we do this? Well, I have on my channel, as I said, go check it out. I've got over 600 videos. I have guided meditations on, I've got several of them on letting go, how to let go, let go of anxiety, let go of stress, letting go of emotions. I've got different ones. Go check them out. See which one you like. Use it and use it to let go. And until you get to the stage where when you think about being able to astral project, all you feel is positive emotions, excitement, or amazement, enthusiasm, 100%. Not, well, yeah, I'm really excited to do this, but down here I have this deep root seated belief that it's negative. No, you've got to get rid of that. You've got to let it go. Once you've let that go, then you move on. I said, check them out in my channel. That is the first step. Very simple step. Just go do it. Step two, we have to align our chakras. Again, I have more videos on how to do this, but I'm going to recap for you here. It is a simple process. And for the process of astral projection, it is a simple process. If you want to go into this deeper, awaken your Kundalini, etc., etc., etc. Again, I have guided meditations and other videos of me talking, explaining how to do these things. But we're going to take the seven typical standard yogic chakras. There are other systems, the Egyptian system with 13, but for this, the seven serves us fine. Now we have seven chakras. We have the root chakra, which is in just above our perineum, which is that area between your genitals and your anus there. That's where it starts, right at the root, around your coccyx. It goes sort of as far back as your coccyx. That, and that has the red color. Why do we have the red color? It just helps us concentrate on that area. That's what we're going to have to do. Then we have the navel chakra, which is around your belly button. The belly button is the top of that chakra, and that has an orange color inside. Then we go up to the yellow, the solar plexus. We have the green in the heart, the blue in the throat, the purple right slap bang in the center of your head, and the violet, your crown chakra, which is sort of coming out the top of your head. We have to align our chakras. So at the beginning of the process, what you're going to do, first you're going to concentrate. And every time you go to do this, we start with this process. Whether you're sitting, whether you're lying down for astral projection, I would recommend lying down. But you can lie back on a lazy chair, on a gravity chair, if that suits you. But so you're not going to, your body's not going to fall over or anything like that, just to eliminate all these possibilities. So you're going to place your awareness, you're going to focus on First of all, the area of the root chakra, the red down there, coccyx, perineum. Just focus your awareness there. And as you do, you're going to start feeling a nice warm energy. Perhaps it's warm, perhaps it's cooling. Just an energy flow there. And it's just going to start circulating. And that red can help. And when you have this process flowing smoothly, we then go to the navel chakra that's orange and we do the same. We just place our awareness there and let it flow, let it connect. Let it connect down with the root chakra as well. Let it flow up and down however it wants. 
And then when we've got that going, we go to the solar plexus and it's yellow. And the heart that's green. And the throat that's blue. And the head that's purple. And then the violet out the top of our heads. And when we've got this energy flowing smoothly up and down through the center of us, then we can move on. If you need more help doing this, for example, I have an Awaken Your Kundalini guided meditation. I have other videos talking about this. We can either do it with our Dantians using the Nei Gong, the Qi Gong system. Go and check out my other videos on those things. Yes, I have it all there. I have lots and lots and lots of videos and information for you guys. We align the chakras. What's the next step? Right. The next step is very, or for me, was very, 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 very important. This step I could not find directly in any formula. I had to discover this myself and add it in. Because as I said, you know, I get to the stage, if I was trying to do this fixed, I would get involuntary muscle movements and I, I could get out and I'd be pulled back in just because my excitement was drawing me back, was stopping me from being able to do this stuff. So I had to include this step. And it's a very, very simple step. You just have to imagine you. Now, when I say you, I'm not talking about your body. I'm talking about you. So we just have to feel around us, penetrating through you, a pink energy. Why a pink energy? Because pink energy is very soothing, it's very relaxing, it's calming, it's healing. Now, how do I know this pink energy is soothing and calming? Well, I actually use it with my dogs when I go for a walk. When my dogs are out for a walk and they perhaps see another dog they don't like and start barking, trying to go for them, I imagine a pink energy around my dogs. And I just project it around them. And it's amazing how quickly my dogs, yes, my dogs, calm down and relax and just go back to how they were before it started. So there is physical proof of how powerful a pink energy can be. And so what you have to do, you just have to apply it to yourself, surrounding you. And said, it doesn't have to be your body, it's just you. And when you astral project, that pink energy is going to go with you and not stay with your body. Very important step, or at least it was for me. So what's the next step? The next step is breathing. You're going to have to get this breathing right. As I mentioned before, most processes say, you have to lie absolutely still and not move and not twitch. And, nah, you, not with this method. If you need to scratch your head, you scratch your head. If you need to twitch your muscle, you twitch your muscle. It's not important. And in fact, what we're going to do in this breathing, we're going to encourage the feeling and the sensations actually in our body. So we're doing the absolute contrary to all the other methods that haven't worked for me. And I know haven't worked probably for a lot of you guys and girls, obviously. And they've actually stopped you from doing it. So what we do, we become conscious of our breathing. We just place our awareness on our breathing. And when we have a conscious awareness of our breathing in and out, we're going to start, literally, every time we inhale, we're going to imagine, it's not quite the right word, but it'll do, imagine, every time we breathe in, the walls of the space we're in, or if you're outside, just the things around it, every time you breathe in, they're getting pulled towards you. And you feel this energy flowing through your skin into you, being pulled towards you. And as you exhale, it's going to expand out again. And your inhale gets pulled towards you. And as you exhale, it expands out again. This breathing process, again, is a vital part. Do this process. Every time you want to astral project, do it for at least 10 minutes. Now, for a lot of you, I would highly advise to practice this step as well before going any further. Set a timer maybe on your mobile or whatever, with a very soft 
chime just to tell you when 10 minutes is up. Why? Because when you're doing this, a lot of people are actually going to say, okay, I've done this for 10 minutes, let's move on to the next step. And if you actually time it and you look at your, your timer, it's only been two minutes or six minutes. It hasn't been 10 minutes. For a lot of people, for some people, it's going to fly by. But for a lot of people, 10 minutes is going to be far longer than you think it is. There's a reason for it, because you slow down, you relax. Your internal clock, your time slows down. You have more time to do things. So 10 minutes will actually appear far longer than it does to you. So put that timer on and just get used to how long 10 minutes actually is. Breathing in, everything comes in, you feel it passing your skin, passing your muscles, you're very aware of your body at this stage, and just let it out. And in, and out. And this energy is being brought into you, through your body, into you, and out again. It's flowing out of you. Just get used to it, take your time, get the 10 minutes. Now comes the next stage. We've got the chakras nicely aligned. We've got the breathing going. So now we have to open channels in our body. To describe this channel, there are lots of different methods, but this is where we're going to use a little bit of Kabbalah. Within the tree of life, in Kabbalah, you have something very similar to the chakras, but the bottom one is not around the base of your body. It's actually between your feet, and it's called Malkuth. And it's very similar to a chakra, but it's literally half, if you're standing up, it's half out of the ground and half inside the ground. It's like another chakra. And so you have to become aware of that area so you can send energy down into the earth. And then you have Kether, which is the first of the Sephira, or Sephiroth, sorry. And it is basically where your crown chakra is, which is about between a foot and a meter above your head. And that is going to be where you send the energy up to the universe. Now, if you need to practice this, I have a heaven and earth meeting where it meets in the solar plexus, a guided meditation, other videos on that. Again, go check them out if you're not sure how to do this step. What we're going to do, we're going to imagine we have our Kundalini. Now, our Kundalini is a channel, for anyone that studied yoga, is a channel running through the center of your body. And it's a very vast channel. It's a very powerful channel. But then you'll also find within yoga and within Kabbalah, there are two side channels, one running up and one running down. In many cultures, they say, well, men is on one side, women is on the other. Left-handers could be on one side, right-handers can be on the other. There's conflicting information here. You have to remember all the cultures that developed these things were masculine dominated cultures. So one side will dominate the other. However, what I'm going to say to you is try it for yourself and see which is better for you. Whether sort of in the muscles, if you imagine the muscles running down the side of your spine, one's going to be an up channel and one's going to be a down channel. And this channel connects, sort of it runs parallel either side to your chakras. And one's going up to the heaven, and one is going down to the earth. This is similar to positive, a positive ion charge. Positive ions aren't light, aren't blah, aren't, they're just positively charged. And in actual fact, n when we talk about physics, it's negative ions that are actually the good stuff for the human body. And it's positive ions that actually cause electrical storms. So on the outside, through these two channels, you're going to draw down, just see which way works better for you. You're going to draw down from the heaven through Kethid up here, through that crown chakra. You're going to draw it down all the way through, down through Malkuth into the earth. And up the other side, you're going to draw the same positive ions up the other side and send it up into the heavens, in 
into space, into universe, infinite, infinite distance. And this causes within the Kundalini, it's like a negative charge to react. And obviously, for anyone who studied magnetics and magnets and electromagnets, it is the movement between the positive and negative charge which actually causes the magnetic flow. And this is how everything flows, right? So you're going to have running through a center channel, your Kundalini, you're going to have, which will work by itself, flowing up again to the heavens and down to the center of the earth and beyond if you wish. This central channel of negative ions. And you're going to have these two channels, flow, one flowing up and one flowing down of the positive ions. And you're just going to pay attention more to the positive ion flow. One flowing up, one flowing down. You're still doing the breathing work. Your chakras are still aligned. And they're going to flow. Just concentrate on the flow. You can see which way mine flow, can't you? And then as you do that, you're going to become aware of this very smooth flow within your Kundalini, within that central channel of these negative ions. That's all flowing together. You're breathing. Again, practice that for a couple of minutes. Once that is flowing smoothly, you've still got this pink energy penetrating you. Then you're going to bring your attention slightly back to the breathing. You're going to lose the sensations. Just bring your awareness to you, not your body, how this in and out movement is still flowing in you. And then when you're ready, with your eyes closed, with your head still, you're going to move your sight, not your head, not your eyes. You're going to turn your sight, if you're lying down, just whichever way first feels comfortable, left or right. But just, you turn your sight to the left. As I said, not your head, not your eyes, your sight. And as you do this, you're going to become aware that you can actually see what is out here to your left. If you're turning left, if you're turning right, obviously it'll be to the right. And you're actually going to see this stuff. And that in itself is amazing. When you realize you can see without your eyes. And you can see everything that is actually there right now. And once you've done that, come back again and go the other way and look the other way. And study everything that's there. Just see everything that's actually there in detail. Pay attention to it. Take your time. Enjoy the process. Do this a couple of times. Left and right and left and right. Then when you're ready, you're going to look to see what is behind you. Now, obviously, if you're lying on your bed, you're going to see your pillow, right? Until you become aware that you can see what's under your bed. Or if you're sitting on a chair, you're going to see the floor beneath the chair. And you've got to become aware that you can actually see through that floor. And then when you bring your sight back again, you're going to see, you're going to realize that you can see the ceiling of the building you're in. But you can also see further. And you're going to realize you can bring the whole sight of the whole room into your awareness and see everything in detail. When you can do that, when you're ready, find something in the room and just move to it. Not your body, you. You just go to it. If you have trouble at this stage, go back with all the previous steps and make sure you've done them fully. Make sure you've done the full 10 minutes. Make sure on the left side, you can see everything in great detail and the right side in great detail and what's behind you before you try to move. Now, one thing at this stage, if you, when you get out, do not look at your body yet because any thought of your body will automatically bring you back to your body. So just pretend your body is not still lying there. You're not in it anymore. You've gone to something in the room. And you're paying attention to it. If you do bring your attention back to your body, that's fine. You're going to go back to your body. And that's absolutely okay. Just go again. Bring back to the, come back to the breathing. Left, right, up, down. And step out and go and look again. 
if your body needs to move, that's fine. Your body's going to call you back. It's going to call you back. You're going to move. And then you go again. It's not a problem. And then when you can do that, it might be a second. It might be a split second. But just keep going there. If you get called back, that's fine. Go again and again and again until you're there. And you can hold it 10, 15, 20 seconds. Don't need any more than that. Once you've got the 15, 20 seconds there, move to another object and another object and another object. Be careful not to turn around and look at your body lying on the bed. Then, when you feel comfortable and you can see whatever it is you're looking at in detail, and yes, even if the light is off, you're still going to be able to see this stuff. You don't actually need the light on to be able to see the detail. It's amazing. When you get there, you'll see what I'm talking about. And when you feel ready and you've managed to look at five or six objects without being drawn back to your body, this is another big step coming up here. You then, once you've done that, you turn around and you look at your body. For a lot of people, that is going to stimulate you automatically being zapped back into your body. And that's fine. Just go again. Just go again. And you will get to a stage. For some people, it'll take longer. For some people, you'll be able to do it on the first go. And you're just going to look at your body. And once you can look at your body, you can even walk over to it and have a look at yourself. It's, it's very interesting to see yourself sleeping. or You're not sleeping, but it's as though your body's sleeping. It's in that stage of rest. Once you're at that stage, you know you are in a full astral projection. And so the next step, is then going off to other places. Now, how do you go to other places in natural projection? Well, you can try walking down the stairs, if you have stairs in your building, or walk out the front door. And you can go for a walk. You can go for a run. You can try flying. And fly around. You can even just say, I want to go to here. And you'll go there automatically. A great little thing to do at this step, because I'm very much for testing for proof of this stuff. Go to somewhere you know where things change. Now this could be a shop that's closed. It could be a friend's house. And you go and see what your friend is doing at the time you're doing this. And then you ask them the next day. What were you doing at this time? Where were you? Or what were you wearing yesterday? Now, here, no freaky stuff. Don't get freaky. Don't scare your friends. What you could do is, if you have a good friend, you can actually, hey, I'm, I'm trying to do this. If I manage to do it, I'm going to come and visit you so I can actually tell you the next day what you're wearing. And we can see whether you are astral projecting and you can actually see how authentic this stuff is. It's not about just imagination. You will be able to see what they're wearing. If they're sitting down eating, you'll be able to see what they're eating and you'll know and you can test it by asking them or they tell you and you'll know. Once you're there, you can then say, okay, I want to go to the other astral realms. Before you go to the astral realms, you might want to do a bit of research. You might not. You might just want to go. So, okay, I want to go to the first astral realm. You'll go there. Once you know more or less about it, you'll be, you'll be able to go there. You, you just go. That's it. That, that's how you do it. And I did, I literally, I did this in one day. I was trying everything. Nothing was working. Using different formulas, techniques. As soon as I added that layer of pink energy to the practice, I managed to do it. It was amazing. And as I said, I, I, I can now do it. I have tested it. I have proven to myself. You have to prove it to yourself, not to anyone else, that it does work. And you do leave your body. And your consciousness literally leaves your body. And you can see it there. And you feel you are not inside your body anymore. Which is very, very different to astral project. Sorry. Which is very, very different to lucid dreaming. Practice every step. Don't rush it. Take your time, relax. Maybe you guys don't do it in a day. Maybe you have to practice a couple of processes. It Maybe it takes you a week or a couple of weeks. It shouldn't take any longer than that, even if you're starting from absolute zero. Please comment on your experiences. 
Tell me whether you found this interesting. Comment just, just a yes down below. Yes, thank you. Or yeah, I'm not sure. Or I have a lot of fear about this. Where can I find? Whatever you want, just, just make a comment. I'm here to help you guys. Subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, that way you'll be able to find my channel. If you want to go and check out all my other videos at a later date, if you hit that alert bell, you'll also get notified of when more videos of mine come out. Don't forget to like the video and thank you. Go do this. Go realize what astral projection really is. Go have fun with it. Be safe. Be sure. No freakiness when you manage to get there. Good luck.